this manner. So, um, dear friends, thank you for having me once again. As the most venerable Naikaham Guru mentioned, I am no, we, we are no strangers to each other since I have been part of the London Buddhist Vihara congregation for years. As you know, for this uh, English Dhamma talk, I have selected uh, the topic, the three types of uh, Viveka, V-I, V-E-K-A, Viveka. And some of you might remember that we did discuss uh, this topic uh, several times at London Buddhist Vihara. Somehow, uh, there was, a, there has been some requests from London, um, from the from the London Buddhist, Vihara Buddhist congregation, <coughs> excuse me, uh, to talk about this topic again. It is such a deep topic, so I will try during the limited time that I am assigned with, allocated with, I will try my best to explain uh, uh, Viveka. Well, Viveka is a Pali word which also occurs in most Indian languages, like in especially Hindi and Sinhalese as well. So it is a well-known term. We, conventionally, Viveka means uh, interval, break, rest. Taking a break, taking some rest, taking an interval. That's what Viveka conventionally means. But when it comes to, but as a Buddhist technical term, that is widely used throughout the Buddhist canon, the Tripitaka, uh, it has a specific uh, meaning. Uh, Viveka, as a Buddhist term, translates uh, as uh, solitude. Viveka is solitude. So at this point, we are talking about three types of Viveka means three types of uh, solitude. And uh, so you are <clears throat> very well familiar uh, with the uh, uh, the English term solitude. Um, so usually when in terms of rest, taking a break, giving, uh, giving your mind a break, giving your body a break, um, so you understand what Viveka is. But solitude has a deeper meaning. Now, first of all, let me tell you the, the three types of Viveka first and uh, in Pali first, then I will translate one by one as I continue. So the first type of Viveka is uh, Kaya Viveka. K, A pronounced longer, long A, Kaya Viveka. Second one is, second type is Chitta Viveka. So, uh, can anyone say whether you hear me? Yes, but we hear you now. Oh, thank you. Yeah, because on and off, I see my, myself getting muted. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. So, the, there are three types of Vivekas Kaya Viveka, which, uh, Chitta Viveka, and the third type is Upadi Viveka, that is U uh, P A D H I Upadi Viveka. Once again, the list is first one is Kaya Viveka, the second one is Chitta Viveka. And the third one is Upadhi Viveka. So now um, let's explain these three types of Viveka one by one. Before that, um, uh, I must explain, I must say that there's a huge difference between loneliness and solitude because uh, I have, with my dialogues with different people from different parts of the world, I have, I have come to uh, a conclusion that some people don't see any difference between loneliness and solitude. But psychologically speaking, there's a vast difference between um, loneliness and solitude. 
loneliness is a negative thing so when you feel lonely means that uh, you are kind, you are in kind of denial because loneliness is a negative uh, mental condition whereas solitude is uh, a positive mental condition just to just to tell you the difference in simple terms now when you feel lonely means you feel like missing something from your life whereas when you are in solitude you are still alone uh, maybe there's no company around you and you are by yourself but unlike in loneliness when you you are in solitude you feel happier you are you feel happier and you feel more relaxed because you are away from uh, all the uh, hectic uh, things in in your daily life whereas in loneliness in loneliness you may be sad you may lament your uh, life and uh, you may be angry uh, you may continually complain against people in your inner circle or in society whereas in solitude you are complimenting yourself because you have been able to walk away from uh, the hectic society and uh, and so that and and you are enjoying uh, your uh, freedom so that's the basic that's the difference between being lonely and being uh, being in loneliness and being in solitude so while loneliness is considered uh, a mental uh, disturbance is considered uh, a palibodha or distraction uh, is a building block to day to day uh, happiness daily life happiness solitude is cons uh, considered is taught uh, to be a strong grounds for your inner peace so that's the difference between uh, loneliness and solitude now <clears throat> let's look at the first type of uh, solitude by the way uh, so it is easier for us to achieve the first two type of solitudes kai viveka uh, solitude of body and then chitta viveka solitude of mind where the third one is extremely difficult and we will explain some we will use some considerable amount of time to explain the third one yes first let's look at the first one um kai viveka or the put in your body in solitude kai viveka even enlightened people from would uh, give their body a break now so especially living in the west i am back in sri lanka now days but i have been living in the west for like uh, almost 24 years i know how hectic uh, the life in the west is now uh, especially in the west we have to work our body our body is like a machine we find it extremely difficult to give our body a break uh, so in the fast paced life we find it difficult to give our body a break give our body a break so that is why kai vivek is very important when you read when you look into the buddha's biography and you would see that uh, it was part of his daily routine that buddha would give, buddha would uh, give his body uh, uh, a rest even though he would sleep only 2 hours only 2 hours within uh, the 40 24 hour circle but still from time to time he would give uh, a break to his body and some of you are family may be familiar with the pali term called janga viharana janga is the calf muscle viharana means to, also means to give an interval literally janga viharana means give an interval to your calf muscles you know calf muscles we were, we use our calf muscle when we walk so we get tired we get our calf muscle we get our low, our legs tired so janga viharana means to give your legs uh you get your give your foot give your legs a break so even enlightened people are concerned with uh, uh the the health of their the bodily health because you are enlightened and enlightened being it's one a buddha or an arhant or a pachyaka buddha is enlightened in their mind in his in his or her mind whereas enlightenment has nothing to do with their physical body so still even though you are enlightened your body is still made of flesh and blood and bones and it is subject to 
get tired, subject to different kinds of illnesses, so that when you disregard, when you neglect your bodily health, even if you are mentally strong, you can prevent your body falling, uh, falling sick. So that is why it's very important that Buddhism highly recommends that no matter how strong you are emotionally and psychologically, you still need to take the best care of your physical body. From time to time, you need to give a body a break. Now, <clears throat> insomnia. Insomnia is one of the major health uh, problems in the world, across the world. So, and according to <clears throat> health experts, it's like an endemic now. So, and then it's very hard to have a cure for your insomnia. So insomnia, as you know, is lack of sleep. Even if you feel very tired in your body, but you find it difficult to fall asleep. Usually when the body is tired, it can fall asleep faster. Whereas when you have chronic insomnia, you find it difficult to sleep, even though your body is tired. So, and then that is, that is because your body is so much used to uh, overworking itself and then uh, it doesn't like to fall asleep. And that is, that is what is called insomnia. So that is when, uh, that is why it is highly recommended in Buddhism that you need to take the best care of your physical body. You need to give a body a good break. Now, there's a misconception among Buddhists that it is mind that is important and the body has no importance whatsoever in our day to day life, which is wrong. We need to equally take care of our body. And once again, Buddha has uh, shown that by, by example, and he would clean his body, he would rest his body, and he would give a good break to his body. And that is called Kaya Viveka. The Kaya Viveka, lack of Viveka to your Kaya, or lack of uh, rest uh, to your body, uh, can contribute towards uh, a multitude of illnesses, sicknesses. So that it is very important that we take care of body. And then as you know that as uh, uh, busy bodies, as living, as those living, as someone living a very hectic life in over there in London, or maybe some, we are joined by people from all over the world, I guess. And then overall, nowadays, even despite the fact that uh, science and technology has given us uh, lots of comfort, comforts in abundance, and then day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year, more and more people fall sick. And then, uh, so the, every year, uh, so that according to global statistics, uh, there's an increase, sharp increase uh, um, in, in the population that uh, suffers from insomnia. That is basically due to their failure to give their body a good break, Kaya Viveka. Now let's move on to the second one, Chitta Viveka. Chitta Viveka is giving a, a break to your mind, Chitta Viveka. And then uh, at this point, Chitta Viveka is possible through mindfulness meditation. I know your temple, London Buddhist Vihara, is, one of, is the first and foremost center in London that conducts different type of mindful, mindfulness retreats. I myself would join you, especially on Wednesday meditation. So whenever I am there, Naika Hamdru would ask me to join the Wednesday meditation group, which I would really enjoy myself. And then so even so, despite, despite the fact that you are spiritually stronger, you are emotionally stronger, there's no guarantee because some of you have told me that you never get uh, mentally disturbed because you are so strong emotionally, uh, so strong emotionally and psychologically. But there's no guarantee that you remain emotionally stronger forever. Uh, anything can happen at any time, any given, any, given any given time, something negative can happen. So we ne always need, because mind is very tricky. So all of a sudden, uh, so that the uh, mind uh, uh, can be the biggest troublemaker in our life. So it is very important that we give our mind a break. Now, just like the body can give a break, can be given a break or we wake up by resting it, by letting it sleep, uh, the same way we need to give our mind a break by meditating. 
we need to you know lack of sleep uh, can can contribute to a sharp decrease in your cognitive ability and at the same way when your mind is uh, too much, too occupied with a lot of things uh, and then that also contribute immensely towards uh, a sharp decrease in your cognitive ability so it, it is in a clear mind uh, it is in a clear mind that you can make uh, clear conclusions clear assumptions now we are always driven by a more deep motivation of joy happiness most of the time it is that motivation it is the joy or happiness that we seek after that we hardly earn that we hardly get now uh, people always complain that they have no time to meditate and you don't have to attend a, a, a traditional retreat for a few days that would last for last four days if you can make uh, 10 minutes a day in the morning or at night especially at bedtime for your own sake if you can make time for parties for social gatherings for different kinds of informals if you can get yourself fully engaged occupied in a lot, lot of social event why not make 10 minutes that is for your own benefit that is for your own sake 10 minutes why not drink some water and then uh, do 5 minutes uh, deep breathing standing uh, for 3 minutes standing and then 5 to 10 8 minutes uh, sitting and if possible walking around and that is how you uh, start giving your mind a break chitta viveka chitta viveka is absence of uh, thoughts that trouble you so even even a good thought even a positive thought can still be a building block to your inner peace why because when you um, so sad thoughts are much easier to occur sad thoughts occur very easily whereas it's very difficult to achieve a Uh, uh happy thought happy feelings and then uh, so when whenever a happy feeling occurs in your mind and uh, you tend to uh, struggle to keep it longer the strong of happy feeling the stronger you struggle uh, they disappear much faster of uh, sad thoughts uh, the the more you struggle uh, to get rid of them they stay longer that is a sad and that is a sad inevitable reality once again of happy thoughts uh, the more you try to keep it they disappear faster much faster of sad thoughts the more you try to get rid of them they stay longer much much uh, they stay longer much longer so that is so because mind is very uh, tricky so that is the chitta viveka now let's move on to the third one uh, upadi viveka now upadi viveka uh, is very difficult now upadi kaya viveka chitta viveka and upadi viveka now upadi viveka is much much more deeper than kaya viveka and chitta viveka while any average person can achieve kaya viveka or uh, and chitta viveka uh, it is basically enlightened people who are able to enjoy and o h u upadi viveka upadi u p a d h i literally means substrata a substrata singular substratum plural substrata upadi means a substratum or a substrata substrata a substrata means something underlying something invisible something dormant something that we can see we find it difficult to see something that we feel but at the same time we don't look at so at the same time we can touch it it is a substrata at this point upadi literally means the concepts concepts that uh, we have built and we keep in our dormant mind so the substrata are basically dormant they are invisible it's very difficult for us to capture locate those substrata now substrata upadis are derived uh, or they originate from our attachments uh, we have different kinds of attachment in our previous uh, classes in different dialogues and classes that we conducted london buddhist vihara and also from me with me and different other teachers of london buddhist vihara 
you have discussed uh, uh, attachment in depth. You have listened to the Dhamma talks, uh, profound Dhamma talks uh, uh, on the nature of uh, attachments. Now, uh, in layman's language, uh, Upadhi Viveka means break from substrate or break from attachment. And uh, when, 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 uh, when you say uh, you, that you are trying to take a, get a break from attachment, and to that effect, immediately you will see that it's ex extremely difficult to achieve this type of break or Viveka. Why? Now, as average putujanas or conventional beings, unenlightened beings, uh, we we find up, we find our, we would find tend to find our life meaningless, uh, lack of happiness, or life absent of happiness, joy, unless we are able to maintain attachment to certain things or craving. If I say tanha cravings. So if, uh, if you choose, if you like the craving, uh, find craving a, a better, better term uh, than attachment, you may use it. So substrate literally means concepts, ideas, conclusions, assumptions that we create and we keep in our mind, in our dormant mind. And it is those concepts that can easily become a building block uh, to our uh, existence. So substrata are called uh, existential threats to our life. So that, uh, so once again, uh, Upadhi Viveka can be achieved by enlightened people because they don't have attachment, but you don't have to be once again, however, you don't have to be an enlightened person to achieve an iota, uh, an iota of uh, uh, Upadhi Viveka. Now, if you have too many attachments, if you and then when you make a list of attachments, of course you may you will make a list of hundreds or thousands of things that you need. But if you can manage your dis attachments, desires, cravings by only selecting the most important cravings, uh, your attachment to job, your attachment to your property, you need that in in this conventional. On the worldly level, you need to make money because you have to pay bills. You have to uh, you you have to perform duties and responsibilities towards different people, and then you you are multitasking. You have you have different roles to play in your day to day life as a social being. But at the same time, um, so that uh, if you can reduce certain attachment, uh, the more you reduce your the more. Uh, your cravings or attachment, and then you can achieve a higher level. Uh, you can have a better feeling, uh, uh, better feeling of upadhi viveka. But once again, overall, upadhi viveka or uh, break from substrata, uh, in other words, break from attachments, is uh, deeply achieved and enjoyed by enlightened people. That being said, I would like to take questions right now in case you do have. Because the questions uh, can put me in a different direction. I always uh, reinforce myself uh, with the questions you may ask. Uh, Bante? Yes, ma'am. How do one start to achieve Upadhi Viveka? How do you want to start now? You said that we can get an aorta. Of yeah. The so mm -hmm. uh, what is the first step in? Uh, the first step is you need to reduce your social obligations. Okay. Yeah, you know, sometimes some people are addicted to parties, social gatherings, but uh, when, you, uh, when you avoid, uh, social interactions uh, on a regular basis, and so that and that could lead to uh, a subtle reduction in your sub attachments. That means you have to be happy with yourself. Exactly. The more you are away from social interactions, 
you you are happier yourself you become happier yourself okay bante teruan sarnai teruan sarnai okay that being said uh once again i pay my vandana homage to his eminence bogor sri silmar nayak mahathir uh, head of london buddhist vihara and the chief sangha nayak of great britain as well as the resident sangha and the congregation for having me for this evening and then uh, it had been a such a short time i simply wanted to share some ideas with you thank you for listening whatever the however little the knowledge that you have gained from this short dhamma talk may it help you in your uh, spiritual life because uh, before we achieve nirvana we we need to be happy in our day to day life so that uh, you have to make firm resolution uh, to to not neglect your body to not uh, neglect your uh, mind at the same time to reduce uh, unnecessary social interactions so that when you do so you should be able to give your body a good break you should be able to give your mind a good break at the same time you would also be able to have a sense of um upadhi viveka in your day to day life thank you very much good sarana so that that's all finish Thank you, Bante. Thank you. Thank you. Seven, yeah. Thank you, Bante. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, what's up, Mr. Swami Master? Yes, sir. Nine. May I leave now? May I leave now? Sir, nine, everyone. Sir, nine, everyone. As good as a short one. As good as a short one. अहिन्ना स्वामी नमस्ते